Hey guys, even here and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. We are starting with a back update at three days out of Ampro Cup Spain. We have Mikkel Grigio showing us his back. And you might think that, I mean, you might say that Krizo is not exactly known for his backside, like for his back and the glutes and the hamstrings. Like, those are not exactly his strongest areas. He's definitely better from the front. But you can't say that he's not good from the back. I mean, look at his back right here. It's very much detailed. It's wide. Look at the freaking details in the shoulders. That's just something you don't see very often these days. And I talked about this earlier. It's because, in my opinion, his physique is untouched. He's not putting anything in those shoulders. I don't think he's even injecting gear in there. Because look at the details. Like, you don't see these kind of deep separations if, if somebody's putting a lot of any kind of oil in... Milo Scharzer told me this once a long time ago, and I actually noticed that one prep, I was shooting mainly shoulders, it wasn't a lot of gear, but I was focusing on shoulders only, and like in the end, I didn't have the separation that I would usually have, and also one of my friends got marked down in one of the shows, the judges actually told him it was because he was using Sintel in his shoulders, when really he was just injecting a lot of gear in there, so obviously Krish is not doing that, he's not using Sintel anywhere, and he's obviously avoiding those shoulders, at least I think so because the details are so so prominent so visible so deep so he looks very crispy everywhere and this is three days out of a show so on the day of the show he's gonna dry out and fill out even more and in my opinion right now he is the favorite to win the Emperor Cup Spain like I said he is definitely much better in the front poses all the front poses of Grigio are freaking phenomenal this is the last year's Mr. Olympia, and he was, he kind of overdieted a little for this show, he lost some size and fullness, later at the Prague Pro, he definitely got back some of that fullness, and I think this year, the Emperor Cup Spain, we are gonna witness the best Grigio so far, like I said, front shots are very good, side shots, not so much, mainly because of his glutes, and like his side lag, and I don't know, he's not really posing the best way possible, but like conditioning, he always brings it, Look at the condition here at the Mr. Olympia. Nobody was this crispy at the Mr. Olympia that year. Nobody. He was the most conditioned guy. Look at the back. Like, it's maybe not the most, the, the prettiest, the, the, the deepest back, but with all the details, that crispiness that he has, it's still very good, but it kind of stands out in the IBB Pro League. If I remember correctly, the judges actually told him that they don't want to see this crispy, dried out look. They want to see more fullness. So hopefully he will fix that, he already fixed it for the last show he did, and I think this year at the Emperor Cup Spain, he's gonna be just conditioned enough, I mean very conditioned, but hopefully he's gonna bring crazy fullness, and it's most likely gonna be enough, I mean this guy is 7 at the Mr. Olympia, he was in the second call out, he is very very extremely good. However, he's gonna face some really good competitors at the Emperor Cup this year, last year it wasn't that competitive, I mean, this year it's not like the strongest show of the year, but it's definitely much more competitive than the year before. This year we have William Bonek, Bakros Tabani, and for example, Sas Hirati, who just uploaded this photo from his peak week also at three days out, and this guy is also looking phenomenal. Now, he's a shorter guy, and I think he's gonna compare better with William Bonek, and in my opinion, Bonek and Sas here are gonna fight for the third. Of course, I might be wrong, this guy might win the show or play second or something like that, I don't think so though, even though he's really good from the front and from the side, like he has that fullness, that bubbliness, that pop, and that also that dry look, he is Persian, just like Hari, just like Bekrus Tabani, so he has that very thin skin, very hard, hard look, so he looks phenomenal right here, but from the back, I don't know, I don't know, not very good, not very good from the back, uh, the back was an issue of his even back in 2017 when he played second at that New York Pro, so the back was kinda like this, similar, not very wide, not very deep, you know, it was a problem area for him and I don't see any improvements, I mean, here the angle is also kinda off, like it's uh, from the higher angle, uh, if, if they took this photo from a lower angle and if he opened up a little bit more, I think he can do this pose better. I think he's uh, he's pinching his shoulder blades a little bit too much. You know, he, he's, he's squeezing the scapula backwards. I mean, maybe if he opened up a little bit more and, you know, opened up those lats, maybe it could look better. 
but probably not. He probably knows that. He probably tried all the variations and figured out that this one works the best for him, and this is the best that we got. So because of the back, I don't see him winning or placing second or beating William Bonac for that matter. I think because of his back, he's gonna probably place uh, behind these three guys, but you know, top four at this show, coming back after seven years, would also be a great success. Now, we also got a physique update from Behrus Tabani also a couple of days before the show. Take a look at this guy. I mean, he also has that uh, Persian genetics, you know, Persian uh, thin skin that, like, only those guys have that. I mean, they have this, this graininess in their physiques. It, it's crazy. If you watch Iranian uh, bodybuilding shows, you can see that all those guys have that kind of look. Uh, so this year, IIBB World Championships, the amateur, the other IIBB, is going to be held in Iran. And everybody knows that it's going to be very, very tough to win anything or to place inside of the top three because those guys are insane. Also, Egyptians are going to show up and those guys are also incredibly genetically gifted. So it's going to be it's going to be very tough for anybody to do anything over there. And Bakrus Tabani is one of the best in that country. He's second best, I would say, after Heidi Trupan. If I forgot anybody else, you guys tell me down below. I mean, Sashi Rati, like I mentioned, he's also from Iran. And you can see that he has that kind of look. All these three guys have the same kind of uh, crispy, grainy look. So look at the glutes of Bekrus Tabani. Very, very dry. Maybe not super deeply separated, but the skin looks super, super dry. The hamstrings also conditioned. Look at the back. Also, very, very dry. Skin looks super, super tight, super thin. His back is phenomenal. He's gonna beat Carrillo in the back. And also, like, in the back poses because of the glutes. You know, he's definitely more complete from the back. I also think he's got him from the, from the sides because of the same reasons. You know, simply thickness, back to chest thickness, and the lower body, like glutes, uh, hamstrings, quads. I mean, everything looks good from the side. The weak point of Bekrus Tabani are his quads from the front. From the side, you can't really see the problem or from the back, but when he turns around and shows his front double, for example, or front lat or absent eyes or most muscular, you will notice that he has a glaring weakness and it is his quads. Now, I don't know how much he improved them because it's been a year, almost an entire year of him uh, working and probably trying to improve that single body part the most. So it's probably going to be better. The question is how much better? Look at the quad right here. Like, is it going to be big enough to actually challenge or beat Grigio? Honestly, I doubt that. For example, last year when he competed at the Romania Pro, you could see that the legs were an issue. And uh, Horse MD here placed third. And some people had him, you know, second instead of Becherus because of the legs. I mean, Horse MD, Marcelo D'Angelis had the best legs here, even better than Samson Dowd, and Samson's legs are crazy big. But here, for some reason, they kind of looked smaller. I mean, maybe Horse MD actually has bigger legs. His legs are really, really big, but you can see here, like, Samson, his legs are flowing really well with his upper body, and Backrus, he can match, he can almost match Samson with the upper body, but with the legs, no, no, it's definitely a big issue balance wise but because he's so complete from from the back from the sides and everything he managed to beat nathan diasha here but there was zero chance of him beating samson and it was mainly because of the legs if he had matching legs whew, i don't know i don't know this guy would probably be one of the top guys in the world and take a look at krizo here next to samson also definitely a much bigger difference krizo has good quads <laughs> Look at Nexilla, man. Look at his legs. That's that's out of this world. I mean, Krizo has good legs. His front shots are good. And his back shots are decent. His side shots are also decent. But I think overall, because of the overall completeness, he is going to end up winning this show. And I don't see Bakrus Tabani winning it. But it's going to be very interesting to see this comparison. All right, next up, we got a physique update of Hunter Labrada at 13 weeks out of... Uh, Italy and the UK. I think those two shows are his plan right now in 13 weeks. And his weight right now is 284. And his conditioning for 284 pounds is actually very, very good. I mean, of course, he needs to go down. He's definitely going to get lighter. A lot lighter when he gets ready for the show. But 
Like, is he going to win his shows and qualify for the Mr. Olympia? Of course, of course he will. He actually placed one spot above Mikhail Grishin, so he's even better. He was uh, sixth at a Mr. Olympia. So he's also one of those guys in the second callout, and uh, deservedly so. I mean, this guy is a freaking mass monster. Really, really massive. For some reason, I see a lot of guys criticizing Hunter and saying that he's getting worse, that he's melting, stuff like that, but... I don't really see that. I think this guy is actually improving, getting better, getting bigger. I mean, on the stage, he doesn't peak perfectly always. I mean, last year, he only peaked perfectly uh, at the Tampa Pro, where he won. Then at the Texas, his posing wasn't very good, for example, and he, he wasn't as dry as he was at Tampa. At a Mr. Olympia, he improved a bit from Texas, but it still wasn't his absolute best. I hope, I honestly hope that this year he's gonna be like 90% at the, at the qualifier and then really nail it for the Mr. Olympia. Why? Well, I wanna see him always at 100%, but it seems like it's not gonna happen for Hunter. He can peak once a year, it seems so. So hopefully for the Mr. Olympia he's going to peak perfectly. And with all this size, where can he place? I mean, can he place higher than last year? Can he go up? Can he beat Andrew Jack and Brandon Curry, for example? Or can he beat Nick Walker again? I don't know. I don't think so. But, you know, top 5, top 6 again, it's reasonable. If he improves a bit and comes in super shredded and peaks perfectly for the Mr. Olympia, yeah, I think 5th spot is best case scenario, which is also an amazing result. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. And for the end of this video, we got something really interesting. So it's Larry Wheels and Callum Wilmoger showing off their torn biceps and they're trying to figure out whose bicep is more <laughs> messed up and as you can see Callum he has this kind of a hole in the bicep and he has that kind of bulge in the in the forearm I have no idea what that is it's it's really weird if you guys have any ideas tell us down below in the comment section but it's interesting to see that Nathan Diasha and the Nexilla also have the same thing going on in their forearms I know that uh, Nathan tore his biceps, just like Callum, so that might be the reason, but I don't know that the Nexilla tore his bicep, and his lump is way lower on his, uh, on his wrist almost. Check it out, <laughs> I don't know what this is. I actually left a comment uh, on this post, and I said, but they are both in the oxygen gyms. And people were having uh, reactions to that, but I was joking around, of course. I don't think there's anything in the Kuwait that they're giving these guys injecting in their forearms. <laughs> this is probably due to some kind of injury, I'm guessing so. You guys tell me what you think. But it's interesting to see that uh, Callum has the same thing going on. Yeah, very weird, very weird. Whatever you guys think about whichever part of this video, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.